Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor. Welcome to my Gen 2 in review episode. Today I've been thinking about what to discuss. I really don't have anything new that I have done in Gen 2 recently other than just my standard updates and and that sort of thing. I thought about doing a video on the HDA jack retask command. I think that might be helpful to, to people, but I really need to figure some more stuff out. I've installed a couple different Linux flavors, and I have no problem using the HDA jack retask program and instantly having success, whereas inside of Gen 2, I have to release the driver then start XORG, restart the driver, then run the, t the retask, then restart XORG again, and then my sound's proper. In other distributions, I don't have to do that, so I've got to figure out what am I doing wrong. Now, as I've mentioned in my last couple of videos, I have made a lot of stuff work very well in this current environment. But one thing I wanted to talk with you guys about was a question I got on my last review, which was the, the person giving the question said that they had a $400 budget and they would like to buy a laptop, but everything has Windows 8 on it and they don't want to deal with this whole headache of EFI. I started looking online and I can't find anything that you can purchase since about 2000, end of 2012 that doesn't force you to have EFI. Now I will tell you guys that anybody looking for a laptop or anything out there, if it has Windows 8 on it, you're going to be cursed with EFI. Windows 8 has played it quite, or Microsoft has made it quite clear that Windows 8 will only support secure boot and an EFI based BIOS. So if you're looking at any machine and thinking that you're going to put Linux on it, if it has Windows 8 on there, you're going to have to deal with the EFI issues. Now I've also looked at Toshiba, Samsung, Asus, Acer, HP, you name it, and it appears that any computer you purchase now within the last 18 months or, or so are all going to have EFI, whether you like it or not. I have searched high and low looking for computers that somebody is building, anybody is building, that just has the good old legacy BIOS and no EFI. I have not found anything. Nothing out there at all. So this is my task for those few viewers I have. Does anybody out there know of a good solution for somebody who wants to purchase a new computer, new laptop, that can at least get something without EFI? Is there anything out there? Because I'll tell you, I know we're a small community right now of Linux users, but we're growing and we're getting stronger. And KDE, GNOME, XFCE, these desktop flavors are getting so robust, we're going to be knocking on a lot of people's doors and people eventually are going to start realizing that Linux is a lot better of an OS to be using than Microsoft's Windows 8. I, mean, I read an article just recently that stated that they're already looking at trying to push Windows 9 soon and they're talking about even possibly giving it away because they're trying to dig themselves out of this deep hole, the fiasco that they've created with Windows 8. You know, it seems like every other version of Windows from day one has just been pathetic. You know, and XP was, was probably one of the last decent ones that they did, and now they're forcing everybody to upgrade because we're not going to support the security on it. Well, if their operating system wasn't so crappy to begin with, we wouldn't have to worry about that kind of security being dealt with all the time. 
but to force people to finally upgrade their systems by telling them they're not going to support it anymore? I guess that's the only way if you can get them to upgrade. So be it. Enough on that, though. I'm not here to talk about Windows. I'm just here to talk about Linux. And I want to ask, is there anybody out there? Any yeah, eventually Linux will find a way to work better with EFI. And I'll admit, even the last couple distributions that I've looked at recently to do reviews on have actually, as long as they're 64-bit and they meet a certain criteria, have been working okay within EFI using the refined boot manager. Eventually we'll get to a point where eh, it doesn't matter if it's EFI or not. We're going to have to. It's just going to work. But when you're compiling everything from scratch like you do with Gen 2, you just got to know a little bit more when dealing with it to know how to build your kernel proper and what applications you might need. But I'll tell you, it sure was a lot easier to do this a few years ago. I never realized how good I had it with my last laptop. If, if that system didn't have some of the issues that with the networking and all that, I'd rather use my four-year-old laptop than this one just because of the EFI issues. But we have a great community out there. We have a lot of people that are developing for it. Eventually, we'll look back in a year or two and say, eh, meh, what were those problems with EFI again? We'll get it solved. We'll get it figured out. But if anybody has any great ideas, I'd love to hear them. I'm sure other people out there who want to be still involved with Linux that don't want the headache are interested as well. And I also want to ask, because I read a lot of articles about how they were saying that Linux was crashing a lot of computers, specifically, specifically I should say, uh, Samsung laptops in the beginning. And, the, and these articles I was reading weren't that long ago, uh, five, six months ago, four months ago, October, per se, even two months or three months ago. People were talking about how uh, Ubuntu, uh, Mint, other flavors were actually bricking laptops with EFI. But then they were proving that it had nothing to do with Linux, but a bug within EFI. I'm not sure if they've actually fixed those issues. I'm very thankful because I throw a lot of different Linux distributions on this thing seeing what can happen. Now a lot of them don't boot at all and a lot of them won't work but the ones that have worked I haven't bricked it, I haven't done anything to this one that would hurt it but that's not something that makes me feel too warm and fuzzy about playing around with it. And once again I feel like it's some sort of conspiracy. I'm not really a conspiracy theorist or one of those who thinks everybody's out to get you but it's kind of strange how they do this stuff to you and then all of a sudden you put Linux on it and it bricks the system. Hmm. Things that make you go hmm. Anyway. Tell me what you think and give me some more topics of what you might want me to talk about with Gen 2. I'm kind of getting to that point where I've discussed a lot and then of course the Gen 2 installation guides that I did. I do need to go back. I think there have been a lot of questions about installing KDE or installing some sort of a GUI interface and I'll have to work on that once I get some of those files moved over and maybe I can do a tutorial left on that. But if there's anything else out there that you guys have or if you guys have questions you just like me to discuss on these Wednesdays, I'm not sure where to take this particular episode or series of episodes because like I said other than when I run into a problem there's not much to talk about but thanks for watching do send me your comments and questions we'll move on and uh, we'll make it all work thank you again if it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having enjoy it thank you so much talk to you later bye